development has to be done to secure knowledge as a fifth freedom. And something I forgot to say, probably not to that question, important to know, that regarding some calculations, the counterfeiting and piracy occurred in the last 10 years twice bigger economic disaster for Europe than the economic crisis itself. And if it's not 60 billion, but only 50, then it's still not comparable with the 5 billion we are looking and try to, you know, collect in our budget for recovery plan. So this is the money we have to find in Europe in interest for European citizens, and this is another reason why we need to move forward as soon as we can on this road. Thanks so very much. So we are not, we, yes, we can imagine the opt-out and opt-in. I'm sorry to, uh, to have not asked you the question, but I thought you depended on the Commission, you know, for, for a directive. That's why I wanted to see first, you know, when, when you get the opportunity to vote. Okay, we move on to the next question. Um, Richard, introduce yourself, please, Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Richard Granger, Independent Consultant and Head of the Brussels Office of Technology Partners Poland. My question concerns not so much the IPR, but the exploitation of IPR, and in particular the exploitation of IPR arising from collaborative research, which in this day of open innovation becomes more and more important. It's, it's wonderful to hear of the progress that Europe is making very rapidly towards a more common, uniform approach, and that's, uh, as the previous question has said, is something that you ought to be congratulated on. But while Europe moves towards a common approach in that sphere, um, we see at the level of exploitation of uh, the results arising from collaborative research um, an increasing fragmentation with different countries, different member states adopting different sets of guidelines and policies and rules. Uh, the, the, the Danish guidelines, the Irish guidelines, the, the Lambert agreements in the UK and, and, and so on and so forth. So I wonder whether any of the panel would like to comment on the extent, if any, towards which the, these discussions that are going on at the moment in the Commission and in the <laughs> In which case I will finish my question loudly and quickly. Whether any of the panel would like to comment on the extent to which the discussions around uh, more harmonization of, of intellectual property protection have extended towards European harmonization of the guidelines and uh, good practices about how intellectual property arising from collaborative research should be handled and exploited. I'm going to take two more questions on that side. Um, first, yeah? Seems this work. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fernando Soriano. I work in research in motion. And I, I, I push it. Can you hear me? Maybe, maybe now? Okay. Okay. So uh, I would like to share with you one concern of my company. I said I work in research in motion. Research in motion is well known by the issues it had in the United States with the uh, companies which are not producing companies, but they exploit uh, patents, the so-called trolls. And uh, my company looks with fear to this initiative in Europe because it has two ingredients which make it very attractive for these uh, trolls, for these companies. One is that it opens the possibility to uh, wide injunctions, European wide inju injunctions, which is the main tool used by trolls. And the other one is if, that the, if the initiative is not properly handled and the cost of litigation for the defendant ends up being very high, those two ingredients will be certainly exploited by these companies to come against the uh, interest, especially of small and medium enterprises in Europe. So the principle that the, the system should be useful for the users may not become so useful if we have this problem with the, with the trolls. Uh, so this is a question for the speakers in general. Have, have you uh, analyzed this really in depth? This is a, 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 a maybe a big consequence of a problem. I think this, this is uh, complicated enough. We're talking about two completely different ways of exploiting patents. Uh, so who wants, who of the panelists wants to start? Yeah, Margot?
Um, sorry. As far as roads are concerned, fortunately, today in Europe, uh, we don't have any or hardly any roads, and we are very fortunate about this. But also, it is absolutely clear that we want to avoid roads in the future, and that we have to be particularly careful to design this patent litigation system in a way that it could not encourage the appearance of trolls in Europe. And indeed, there are a number of features in uh, the litigation system as envisaged, which would actually not encourage but dissuade trolls. So um, the first uh, two issues which you have mentioned, I will start with, but then I will go into some other issues. So first of all, you have mentioned the possibility to get Europe-wide injunctions. That could, of course, be very attractive for Strodes. But therefore, we have uh, foreseen that, it's up to the, that there are no automatic injunctions. Patent infringement does not mean that you will get necessarily an injunction. There is a specific rule foreseen that it's up to the judges to weigh the interests of the parties and the harm created by the party which could result from the injunction or to the other party from the refusal of the injunction. And the fact, for instance, that um, the patent holder is a non-practicing entity, as is the case with, with trolls, will be one factor which has to be taken into account. Second, the costs of litigation. Now, the costs of litigation are, first of all, in the United States, extremely high. But secondly, you have also in the United States a rule that every party bears its own costs. So that means going for litigation is with, without risk for trolls in the United States. Whereas in the envisaged court system in Europe, you will have a rule that's the losing party who bears the costs. So that means that if somebody has a weak patent and uh, has a weak case and, for instance, does not get an injunction because um, the harm for the other party would be much bigger, the troll would bear his costs himself. Thirdly, uh, we have in the, United, in the um, United States, we have also something which we would never have in Europe. We have juries deciding on patent cases. But this is something you could not even imagine in Europe. In Europe, we will have professional judges, highly experienced judges with patent litigation, including technical judges. So all the panels would be composed by highly experienced, legally qualified judges, together, which would sit together with technical judges allocated to the, to the panel on a case-by-case -case basis because the technical judge would have to be qualified in the field of technology concerned. And fourthly, one of the problems of trolls is that trolls very often have weak patents which should not even have been granted. And the best defense against these weak patents is that the court system uh, will allow uh, direct actions for revocation to the central division. Because you cannot get only Europe-wide injunctions,